Hello everyone and welcome to this comprehensive lecture on the call statement in Rex programming. If you have ever wondered how to effectively manage subroutines and return value in your Rex program, then you are in the right place. Today, we will break down the call statement, explore its syntax and walk through several practical examples. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of internal, built-in and external subroutines and know how to effectively use the return statement. Apart from that, we will share some valuable tips to enhance your Rex programming skills. So let's dive in and start mastering the call statement in Rex. The call statement is a fundamental part of Rex programming. It allows you to invoke subroutines in your Rex program. And a subroutine is a set of instruction designed to perform a specific task, which can called upon at any time in your Rex program. This eventually helps you in organizing your code, making it more readable and maintainable. Now let's talk about the syntax of call statement. So in this syntax, you have call keyword, which is again a reserved keyword in Rex. After that, you have subroutine name, and this is the name of the subroutine you wish to call. And after that, you have arguments and the arguments are optional parameters that you can pass to the subroutine when you're calling that particular subroutine to perform a specific task. Now consider a simple example where we have a subroutine that prints a greeting message. Here's how you can call this subroutine in your Rex program. When the call statement that is called greet is executed, the Rex will jump to a label that is greet, execute the code which is specified in that section and then control will return to the next executable statement after the call statement that is exit in this case. And when you execute this particular piece of code, you'll have hello, welcome to Rex programming as a greeting message on your terminal. Let's dive into more complex example to better understand how the call statement can be used in your Rex program. So in this example, we would be adding two numbers. And if you have noticed, we have add numbers, which is basically a subroutine that will take two arguments, add them and print the result on terminal. The argument statement is used to receive the arguments, which is passed by the call statement when it is calling the subroutine that is add numbers. So in nutshell, if you look at the Rex program, we have actually defined two variables, that is num1 and num2. And these variables are initialized with an initial value of 5 and 10. After that, we have used the call statement followed by the subroutine name, that is add numbers, followed by the two argument, that is num1 and num2. And when you execute this code, you'll get the result as the sum is 15. Now let's talk about our second example that will demonstrate how you can pass data to a subroutine and how you can use conditional logic within those subroutines. So in the following example, we have used a subroutine that is check even odd and this subroutine will check whether the number that is supplied in the program is even or odd and then it will going to print the result on the terminal. So when you execute this code, the output would be 7 is odd because we have supplied 7 as an argument to the subroutine. Now let's talk about the different categories of subroutine. So broadly we can divide the subroutines into two different categories. First one is internal subroutine and the second one is external subroutines. So internal subroutines are defined within the same Rex program and they are identified by labels. They are pretty useful for organizing your code and reusing common tasks without rewriting code. Apart from that, in case if you want to create an internal subroutine, you simply label a section of code and use the call statement to invoke that particular section. And remember, labels are followed by a colon. Now coming back to the example, so all the examples that we have discussed so far in our previous slides actually demonstrate the use of internal subroutines in your Rex program. So we're not going to go through all those examples again. Now let's talk about our second category of subroutines that is external subroutines. So external subroutines are the routines that are designed and stored as a separate Rex program or script and they can be called from your main program. 
Apart from that, with the help of external subroutines, you can divide your complex business logic into small modules and thus you can make sure that you can reuse the code that you have designed as a part of your project. You're not required to rewrite the same piece of code again and again in your Rex program. So in nutshell, it actually improve the modularity and readability of the program. Now let's look at our example so that we can understand how exactly the main program is interacting with external program. So in this case, we have main routine, which is actually a main program. And then we have calc routine, which is basically an external program. So again, in the main program, we have used the call statement followed by the external subroutine name. And after that, you have to specify the argument or the value that you are actually passing to the external subroutine from your main program. So again, it is not mandatory. It is optional in case if you want to pass any value to it then it is up to you. If you don't want to pass it, then it also it is absolutely fine. So in this case, because we are performing calculation on two number that is 10 and five. So we have passed these two number along with the external subroutine name as an argument. Now let's look at our external subroutine that is calc routine. So again, it is a simple external subroutine, which is actually accepting value from the main program and then performing calculation. So we have used the argument to accept value from the main routine. After that, we have two variables that is add underscore results. So that will store result of addition. Then we have sub underscore result. So this variable will be used to store the result of subtraction. And after that, we have used the return statement to pass value from external subroutine to your main program. So in this case, the result of addition and subtraction will be sent back to the main program. And once the control is returned back to the main program with the information that is being sent by the external subroutine, the main program will use the parse statement to extract the relevant information split into two separate variables that is A and B. And then we have used the say statement to display the result. So when you execute this particular program on IBM mainframe, then you'll get result as 15 and the subtraction result as five. So this is how you can use an external subroutine or internal subroutine in your Rex program. Now let's talk about the return statement because as I've already mentioned that I've used the return statement in our subroutines. So return statement is used to exit a subroutine and optionally return a value to the calling statement. It helps in controlling the flow of your program and passing result back to the main program. And again, the syntax is pretty simple. You have to use the return keyword followed by the expression. So it is uh, pretty straight, simple and straightforward. Now, before I wrap up this particular lecture, let's talk about a couple of important tips for the Rex programmers. And being a programmer, trust me, you should follow these tips to have a Rex program, which is more readable, robust, and modular. So first one is comment your code. That means you should include comments to explain the purpose of your subroutine and major code sections. Second one is modularize your code. That means you must break your code into smaller subroutines to make it more readable and maintainable. Third one is use built-in functions. That means you should leverage Rex built-in functions to simplify your code instead of writing bulky logic on your own. Fourth one is consistent naming. It means that you should use meaningful and consistent name for your subroutines and variables that you have used in your Rex program. And the last one is error handling. That means you must implement error handling to manage unexpected scenarios gracefully. So this marks an end to our today's presentation. So far, we have learned a lot in this particular video from understanding the call statement and its syntax to exploring practical examples, internal and external subroutines and the return statement. By now, you should have a solid understanding of how to use this concept effectively in your Rex program. And don't forget to apply the tips shared to enhance your programming skills and create more effective and maintainable code. If you find this video helpful, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel 
for more such videos on Rex programming. So till then, happy coding and see you in our next video.